Okay, this is, can be for both of you. Um, you both mentioned stags in your speeches. I just wanted to know how you plan to increase the communication between the stags next year and how to get this relationship stronger with the CSA. All right, so that's a great question because it is, um, like Maddie and I both acknowledged, a big part of the role. Um, so like I said, I've taken the opportunity the last few weeks to individually meet with all the STAG presidents and just have an opportunity to hear from them what they really care about. So I think in terms of communication, um, and one thing that they all talked about was having that one main point of contact, which I know Michelle currently is. Um, so I would ask for them to also be able to send me maybe bi-weekly or bi-monthly, however often they feel, just updates, whether it's through email or a group chat, just so we're in constant communication and we're not waiting for you know the monthly or bi-monthly STAG meetings to truly know what other stags are up to. Um, other than that, I think it would just be talking to them about what they personally feel they need and how we can support them, um, and just working to accomplish that. Um, like Steph said, uh, the stags are a hugely important part of the role of VPI, and I see the stags and the CSA are the two biggest, most involvement opportunities for students to get a part of, and it's really important that these two groups have a cohesive relationship and have all communication efforts be positive. Um, through doing this, I really want to create a centralized STAG drive um, open to the executives of the STAG groups and the executives of the CSA to have all pertinent information relevant to all STAGs, including corporate sponsor logos, including um, frequently asked questions, funding information, contact information for everybody that they may need to contact, um, and just have this centralized location where all of this relevant information is for STAGs to go to and cut down on you know, frustrations with communication. Um, so I think going along with ideas like that, we can really better the communication and cohesive relationship between the two groups. Okay, we're going to look at our anonymous portal now. Uh, we'll start at the top here. Both of you have great ideas to expand on the VPI position, though the CSA HR function had little purpose this year. How do you plan on improving this position? Um, I, I see the HR position as extremely important to the function of the CSA, and I really want to enhance, I think performance reviews are a huge part, and they were brought in new this year uh, for the general counsel and executive members on the CSA. And I think furthering those for, um, and bettering those, increasing them more often, will help to enhance the way that our general counsel goes about executing our events, executing um, all of our roles and responsibilities. So um, HR is a very important role of the VPI and by enhancing those performance reviews and enhancing the interview processes, we can, we can really strive to better the program. All right, so in terms of HR specifically, I know that this year there was a lot of work that was done with that role um, and also with the idea of an HR manual. So that would definitely be something that I would like to continue working on and hopefully uh, grow and standardize. Another idea that I think um, would really help grow the role and give the HR coordinators another uh, sort of different outlook on the position would be to have someone come in who's not necessarily on the CSA and just provide... Um, like an objective experience for other people to provide feedback to the CSA because I do think it's great that we have the performance reviews for CSA members, but I also think it's important for students who maybe aren't on the CSA to be able to come in and sort of give us our own performance reviews. So to have someone who's not on the CSA come in and be the person that we can talk to and give uh, that feedback to and who would then provide it to the CSA members as a form of a feedback or performance review, I think that'd be very important and something that the HR coordinators could totally take on. Uh, the one with the most likes so far is VPI is an HR role, not event-based. What experience do you have that will allow you to excel in this role? 
all right, so that's true. that's a good question because i know in the past with the vpo role it was very heavily based on events so in terms of my experience with ah hr between being first year rep and then also professional development co-chair which i talked about in my speech i have had to host a number of interviews just to fill my committee positions and then i've also obviously been on the other side of it in terms of interviewing for the five days for the homeless committee and things like that so i do think i have a lot of experience when it comes to that aspect of hr um, as for the other aspects like i said i've um, i have some ideas about how we can expand the hr function and would just, would just be excited to learn more about it so that's my experience Um, so this past year I mentioned in my speech I was the special events co-chair or currently I'm the special events co-chair and this has cr I have a two co amazing committees um, the special events committee and the fashion show committee and underneath the fashion show committee I have models which we just finished interviewing for and I've had to interview people for 30 positions that I lead and support and I have so through this I have tons of interview experience and what I feel that is very important to go through this process is being able to really gauge the personalities of the interviewees when you're the interviewer and being able to see exactly if they're applying for a position that you don't think they're fit for but you see them best in another role knowing that difference and being able to put them in a position where you think they're going to be able to strive the, the best. I know this past year on the general council and even the executive council, there was a lot of people who applied for positions that they and didn't get. They ended up getting another role and they're so thankful for that. So I think it's a huge advantage to be able to do that and I think through my experience of being an interviewer um, this year as a special events coacher, I, I'm able to do that. Okay, so both of you actually touched on this question a bit earlier, but maybe you can go into the specifics. So uh, what uh, where did it go? Whoops. Ah, here we go. International students represent a large population of our student body. What do you plan on doing to help international students feel more comfortable? So maybe if you can address it specifically. Yeah. Uh, so right now we have International Welcome Day at Asper at the first, at the beginning of the year in the first semester. And this is a place, it's a casual uh, meeting place for international students to come and feel comfortable and welcomed into our faculty. And what I really want to do is expand that, the frequency of this event and host it again in the second part of the semester uh, at the beginning of the winter term. This way it gives the new international students and new exchange students who are coming here the opportunity to feel like they are comfortable and have a safe space to stop safe space to talk and that other international students who came the first year the first semester are able to come again and just really advising and advocating for more frequency of you know this safe space for them to talk I think would be huge All right, so I totally agree with everything that Maddie said. Um, and some of my ideas would also be to, like I mentioned before, perhaps have a, a buddy day specifically tailored to international students that would just help them, like I said, come overcome the cultural or the language barriers. Um, another idea that I think could really help grow the mentorship program is to have sort of a specific subset of the mentorship program specifically for international students um, because I'm sure it would be extremely helpful for them to talk to other students who are maybe higher up in their degree and have been literally in their exact shoes before. Um, other than that, I think it would just be very important to continue feedback with a lot of these international students because I've spoken to a lot of them over the past couple weeks and I know that some of them involvement is hugely important to and some of them are simply here to go to classes and to do their own thing and that's really what's important to them. So I think it's important that we not only continue to push the current initiatives that we have, um, but also to open our eyes and listen to them and see what's really important to them and if we could do that, I think it'll speak huge volumes. Oh, there we go. A lot of the questions are very similar, but I'm going to scroll through a few. Um, okay, communication between all stags at Asper has been a work in progress over the years. What are you planning on doing to increase communication between the stags and the CSA? All right, so I actually have on my computer at home, this is not a joke, a, a list of all my ideas when it comes to how we can improve the relationship with STAGS. Um, so definitely adding to that list. But I think in terms of their communication with the CSA specifically, 
i really want to encourage that next year it's all about building each other up instead of sort of fighting for not that this is what happens but fighting for you know our own participants. so one thing that i talked about in my platform a little would be to have a centralized calendar which i know we do already have online but perhaps to have like an actual hard copy of it displayed somewhere here or on the bulletin boards so that students who maybe don't follow like the social media accounts or who aren't as involved can actually go up to the calendar and look at when events are happening and to ensure that again we're not fighting for attendance at events that we're always keeping them separate and i think just promoting each other's events is a huge thing the stags and the csa should want to see each other succeed because they're both ultimately there to serve the students so i think if we can really enforce that togetherness and that partnership um, that's really where the heart of it all lies and i think communication is a huge part of that Like I mentioned in my speech, uh, I truly believe that the STEGs and the CSA are the two best involvement opportunities for students. And being able for these two groups to work together cohesively is hugely beneficial. And there, I, after talking to people part of these two groups, communication has been an issue. And uh, the STEG drive, like I mentioned before, um, having that open form of communication between both groups where all information is kept that's pertinent to each group, I think would suppress a lot of communication issues between the two groups and suppress a lot of frustrations between the two groups. And other sort of initiatives uh, to help this communication can be explored, but I think that would be huge to cut down on um, unnecessary communication and frustrations. This is the most popular one right now. It's got eight likes. Um, year after year, candidates run on putting Asper on the map. How do you plan to put Asper on the map? I think that, like you said, Darius, this is a year after year thing. And it is something that all of the candidates have talked about in the past years. And it's a tough task to do because Manitoba isn't widely known across Canada. But being able to send more people to conferences and being able to really get our foot out in the door and express that, you know, we, like Steph was a part of JDC and they did amazing this past week or this past couple weeks at their competition. Being able to really showcase that we are able to go to these competitions and do amazing things. I also think it's something that it's a tough task to do and requires the effort of all of the executive members at the time. So it's something that I would want to talk to the executive members if I was voted into VPI alongside the president and really figure out a game plan on how to strategically go about this and express um, how we want to increase ASPR on the map on the Canadian level. All right, so personally, I'm very excited by this question because it is something that um, was a huge part of my platform and something that I really want to dedicate myself to next year. So I have a couple of ideas of how we can make this possible. Like Maddie mentioned, I think the more conferences, the more events that our students attend, the better off we are, the more that we're getting our names out there. And as we've seen in the past, our students tend to do pretty well um, at these events, so I think they really do represent ASPR well. Um, another thing that I've, I've met with the dean and a few of the faculty members about this, which is an idea of mine, um, I think if we're able to create some of our own cases here at ASPR in-house, and I have met with some faculty members who are eager to do so, um, if we can do that and then potentially co-brand our cases with some of the other business schools that we currently use cases from, I think that's huge. I think that's, again, huge brand recognition um, and a great way to get us more recognized. And finally, another thing that I would love to do um, if elected would be to work with the manager of corporate relations and assist in purposely seeking sponsors that are external to ASPR that are perhaps outside of Manitoba because I think the more people that know about us and are invested in our students and their success, the more exposure and recognition we get. And ultimately, at the end of the day, that's what putting ASPR on the map comes down to. Okay, we've only got a few minutes left for this, so maybe if you can answer this in, let's say, like a minute or under. Do you truly think ASPR needs a mentorship program, or would you rather put efforts into another initiative that would enrich the student experience more? You don't have to answer in under a minute. I lied to you. you can... Oh, okay, okay. 
Um, okay, so I think that having a mentorship program and exploring other opportunities are like not, they're not mutually exclusive. I think we can totally build the mentorship program up and still look um, at ways of doing other initiatives and exploring those. I do think a mentorship program is important and I think if you ask a lot of the mentees that are part of the program this year, they'll tell you the same thing. I know during my first year, I know that I actually called the Asper like office before starting school and asked if there was a mentorship program available because it was something that myself and I know some of my friends were really curious about and really wishing that we had. And then this year when I had the opportunity to become a mentor and be part of the program, I felt good giving back and uh, being able to provide that opportunity to someone like myself last year who, again, wished that I had had that opportunity. So I, I do think the mentorship program is extremely important um, for first years and for the mentors alike. But like I said, I don't think it stops us from pursuing other opportunities in any other field or direction. So. So the mentorship program has been a huge part of my platform and it's something that I truly see as extremely beneficial to our Asper students, um, first years and um, more senior students. I think it's something that first years, for especially for me when I came into Asper, like I said, I was so overwhelmed. I had no idea about the immense opportunities that Asper has to offer and that resulted in me not getting involved. And I think if I had somebody who I could go to constantly for, and create a personal connection with who could tell me about the opportunities that Asper offers, I would have gotten involved sooner. So I think it's important for these first year students to be able to have that person to look up to because it's scary walking into university. It's a scary transition from university to, um, to sorry, from high school to university. And it's also a scary transition from university to the workforce, which is why I really want to add the young associates into this program so that these our students can progress through the mentorship program and really grow as mentors and mentees and be able to have somebody to look up to constantly throughout our university career. So again, like I think the mentorship program is extremely important and is super beneficial to all students and can further progress our learning as all Asper students. So this time it's actually about a minute per, per answer here. Um, so for the last question, how do you plan to encourage students who want to get involved in the CSA but have no experience to apply? I, I don't see experience, having no experience as a barrier to get involved. For me, when I've been choosing people for committees, I look at their work ethic and their attitude. Having experience only gets you so far, but if you have the attitude to truly want to do better things and successfully create events and successfully create opportunities for Asper students to be a part of, then I don't think experience is necessarily all that matters. I think that if a student has the good work ethic and a good attitude, then they can do amazing things with being involved. All right, so I think it's super easy from people like us who have been involved with the CSA um, and are sort of part of that already to advocate for others getting involved, but I can, I can relate to how scary that is. So I think that a couple things, um, one of my goals would for sure be to make sure that all Asper students, doesn't matter what level of experience they have, feel just as entitled to the same opportunities and experiences um, as anyone else. And I think a big part of that would be to start with first year. So I think the first year case competition is an excellent example of an opportunity where first years have that experience. But I think we should have more workshops and more competitions like this to build up our confidence and our skills starting right in our first year so that when it gets to second, third, fourth year, we're not discouraged by our lack of experience or because we couldn't go to the one case competition that was tailored specifically for us. So that's a huge part that I would love to uh, grow next year and hopefully be able to encourage others to get involved. Okay, so that's it for the VPIs. Thank you both if we want to give them a nice round of applause for their <laughs> candid answers.